It's time to start your life the way it is meant to be. There's only one time when it will be too late, and you don't want to wait for that. This is Now or Never. The choice is yours. Your host is Karen Wright. Today, you're about to meet some amazing people. The stories are not always happy ones, but they define a healing process. Listen with an open mind and an open heart. Now, here is Karen Wright. Listeners, thank you for joining us today. It's Now or Never. The choice is yours. And it's May 2nd. Our show title today is Healing as You Remove What Does Not Serve You. Our, today, our guests are is Jennifer Newman and Beverly Brunel. Jennifer, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Good. Jennifer, tell our listeners, where are you joining us from? New York. Woohoo! We got New York yeah. on our line, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Beverly, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing fine, a little nervous, but really happy to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. Well, you're so welcome. And don't be nervous. This is just, people love you already, I can tell. So you're <laughs> going to be great. And where are you joining us from, Beverly? I'm in Northern California. Okay. So we got East Coast, West Coast, and I'm just Utah. <laughs> Not just. Just I'm just Beautiful. a Utah girl. <laughs> yeah. I'm along the mountains here, which is absolutely, actually, it's really pretty today. We've got, had some rain, which we need so bad. So mm -hmm. thank you to our rain gods. Um, yeah. Just love that. So today we're going to be talking about a lot, and I'm so excited about this episode. Are there things in the landscape of your life that no longer serve you? Are you holding on to past hurt? that bogs your story down. Could you write a new chapter of resilience and intention? Today, my guests, Jennifer Newman and Beverly Brunel, we are going to dive deep and learn about these things and even more. We hope to help empower the listeners today and give them the hopes and desires that they might need at this time or just reconnect and let them be confirmed that what they're doing, they're on the right track. So I am just so excited as we begin the show today. I invite all of us just to get grounded for a moment. Just let's just close our eyes and cross our legs and cross our hands, close and just take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Allowing that breath to penetrate to our lower abdominals, breathing back in and releasing. And then come and wrap your hands up around your shoulders, giving yourself a big squeeze and repeating three times to yourself, I am worthy of my love. 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 Take another deep breath in. Releasing. And then taking your finger and tapping three times on your chest. Repeat, repeating the word accept, 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 accept. Another deep breath in and releasing. <coughs> Listeners, I hope you joined Beverly and Jennifer and myself today as we Took those couple of minutes just to breathe, getting grounded and being in the now, being in the present and how important that is throughout our days when we're feeling like we're shallow breathing and we're stressed out and things are happening in the car at the office. Just close your eyes, take 30 seconds and breathe deep, four or five depths breaths, just deep breaths for you. And just allow that to happen, to calm yourself. Life is too short to stress about it. And that's not why we're here. And so the breath, as I always say, is a gift of life. And I truly believe that. 
Okay, listeners, get your pens and paper out because we are going in for our affirmations. And for those of you that not quite sure what affirmations are, affirmations are something that I have truly um, in the last nine years have formed an attachment to. <laughs> I believe that we are what we think and that when we're talking and speaking to ourselves, we need to speak highly. We need to speak positive and not put ourselves down. I have the affirmations written all over my mirrors, on my closet, sticky notes all over. It, they just make my day. I get up and I see them. They're on my ceiling. Like, seriously, they're on my ceiling, you guys. I will stick <laughs> certain smile. It's like, here we go. And it's just so exciting for me. So as I read the affirmation, I always invite my guests to um, think about what you thought of when I read the affirmation and listeners, you know, I don't ever look at my card and it's always a surprise. So remember our show title today is healing as remove, as you remove what doesn't serve you healing as you remove what doesn't serve you. And our affirmation is ah, I turn towards love. Mm. I turn towards love. I turn towards love. So as I read that, Jennifer, what came to your mind? You know, I was thinking that we have a lot of thoughts in our mind and sometimes they're, they're negative and hopefully they're positive and the affirmations that, that we want to hone in on are the positive ones. But if something comes in, turning to love, like if something isn't really serving you, like a judgment on yourself or a thought in your mind to maybe flip the mindset right away to sort of train our minds to say, okay, there was that judgment. Well, what's the, what's the other side turning to love? How do we turn to love every time something negative or something that doesn't serve us comes in? I love that. So we're pivoting, we're turning, we're yeah. like, Hey, let's like turn it upside down. Right? Exactly. Turn so turn down, to love. Upside down. Turn it to love. Like, in, turn it to love. <laughs> yeah. I love, I love that. I'm going to use that as a mantra. Good. I turned towards love. Beverly, what came to your mindset when I read that? What came to my mind is um, how we tend to look at things, call it a problem mm -hmm. or a worry or a concern. And if we took that label off and find the love within it, it's like, okay, there's not something wrong. It's like, what's it directing me toward? It's actually a positive thing. And we don't need to go down the rabbit hole of, oh, no, look at all the problems. You can go, okay, this is reminding me, like you say, flip, Jennifer, flip it to the other side. Where is this redirecting me to go? And coming from a place of self-respect, self-honor, self-love, and loving life and inviting that to come in through new means, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So we're not, how we don't have to feel separate from life. It can actually, issues or problems can actually remind us to connect in a new way perhaps somewhere else than where we've been focusing. I love that. Listeners, I hope you take into heart. Remember, when we're listening to the show, we lean in with our hearts. And what Jennifer and Beverly both said were truly amazing and inspiring. We pivot, we turn, we, whether it's a problem or not, we lean in with our hearts to see the love that it is. I mean, like Beverly, you said, we have problems. But to me, I'm like you. There are situations that happen in our lives. And the last thing we want to do is go down the rabbit hole and do those kind of things. And we want to be able to just stop for a moment and see how we can pivot it, how we can make it a love learning experience and turn towards the love. So I appreciate both of you, your, um, your thoughts on that, your wisdom and knowledge for our listeners. Beverly, I want to talk a little bit, um, introduce you a little bit. And as I have, I've, Listeners, you know, I have their bios right in front of me and I'm reading them. And can I just say, I am totally blown away with my guests every week. I'm like looking at their bio going, oh, I just feel honored, so honored to have the wisdom and knowledge, intelligence and um, the willingness you that my guests have, each of you have each week to be here to share with the listeners what you do and what you're all about. And Beverly, you have been an energy healer, an intuitive, a speaker and writer for over 30 years. Is this correct? It is very good. <laughs> a okay. long time. It is a long time. And this is what you guys go jump on Facebook because you can see 
Beverly is this beautiful, long, beautiful hair around her. Just this beautiful, what, I don't even, it's like white, shiny. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's white. <laughs> it's white. It's absolutely, and I love it. Um, and so jump on so you can see us. But as we're, as we um, go through this, Beverly, I, I can sit here and read about you, but I'm not going to today. I do that a lot, but I'm just, I'm going out doing something a little bit different. I would love you to share with our listeners a little bit about you, your journey, and what brought you into for 30 years doing what you're doing with the energy work, with being a speaker, the writer, all of that, and kind of what transformed into that. Hmm. Good question. My mind is kind of really. I know you're, you might, Jennifer, be ready because you're going to be next. (laughs) (laughs) Let's see. It's a full loaded question, isn't it? Well, I'm flashing at all these, you know, all these beginnings. So uh, here's, here's one. So one was um, my kids were really little and I was, I just love being a mom, but it was also really stressful. So I went to classes to how to de-stress and that took me into curiosity about meditation, curiosity about reading more uh, philosophical thoughts, the road less traveled. Um, goodbye to guilt was a good one for me because I grew up Catholic mm. and major guilt trips all along the way. And it was like, I don't have to buy into these, I'll call it beliefs or this conditioning. And that was the beginning. I didn't even realize it to write the second of the work that I do now, because I help people find what their conditioning has been that's causing them to suffer, that's causing their relationships to be feel disconnected and, and lonely and um, hopeless and their creativity and their work and so forth. And we go in to the origins of that, which could be a religious training. It could be uh, family dynamics. It could be ancestral influences from you know eons ago, but they're still alive. So... Um, what woke me up to this was I was going for therapy, believe it or not, twice a week for three years, group and individual each week, okay. talk therapy. And it was helpful. But then one day I went to a hypnotherapist and it wasn't about me just talking. It was about a guided journey. And I felt like in that hour and a half session, I had three years worth of ahas three years worth of insights, awareness, letting go, I was blown away. So it made me want to learn more. So I became a hypnotherapist. And the more I found out what was possible, the more I wanted still people to know, because I've not everybody knows this. And if I can, if I'm just discovering it, maybe other people can reap the benefits too, if I share my discoveries. That's kind of like the beginnings. And I love that. Okay, can I ask you a personal question? Okay. And you can decide if you want to share or not. Okay. Um, why were you going through therapy? What, what happened to get you there? Besides being That's the a mom question. and all the stress of that, to me in life as humans, we have a wake up call, an aha moment to where we're like, I've got to make a change. Something's mm-hmm. got to change here or yeah. I'm going down that rabbit hole. Exactly. And it happens multiple times throughout our lifespan. It's not just once. How lucky we would be if it's only once. No, not really. Because every time we go down the rabbit hole, we learn something new. So yeah. it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, but what was that? If you're okay to share with that, because I love my listeners to understand that my guests are humans and that we all struggle somehow. Well, this is curious because it, it also reflects my work. So mm-hmm. like I said, we're influenced by our origins. So we're brought up by people who have their dynamics. And then as children through osmosis, whatever word you want to call it, we take on the patterns, the behaviors, trying to please them, trying to fit in, so on and so forth. So I realized at an early time in my marriage at the time that we were heading down a path of repeating the patterns my parents were living out that I was very not aligned with meaning I was doing it but I didn't want to I didn't want to become that those dynamics Mm -hmm. and I didn't know where to go with that desire so the therapy was part of my unwinding and finding out where am I where am I in relationship to that otherwise it was very entangled 
What's a wife? Oh, there's my, there's my image of a wife, my mom. What's a mother? There's my image of that. That's my role model. Well, what else is possible? Or, and what else is more me? So I wanted to separate and I didn't know how to do it. And I had to find out what the, what the, what I was copying as it were to realize that I had different choices. I, I think that's amazing that you were aware. A lot of us go through life, not asking the questions, not wanting to maybe pivot or change and just take on the characteristics of family generationals. And that's what you do a lot of that with, um, with the quantum and the energy mm-hmm. with past generations, correct? Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Because it wasn't just my mother and father who were my role models. It was their parents and their parents and the society at the time and the, the environment at the time and so on and so forth. There's so much intricacy influencing us that we don't realize. But mm-hmm. once we do, what, what is it? The love, what was your card again? The love? Turn, I turn love towards love. I turn so towards we love. turn to, in my work, we turn toward the ancestors and toward our early development with an open mind an open heart and respect, even if there was brutality and torture with respect, we don't know what their journey was. We don't know what brought them there, Mm -hmm. but we can acknowledge their courage, their tenacity, their creativity, their hopelessness, their fear, their doubt, their worry, and invite an evolution, invite a change, invite a shift, invite the love to transform it. And then it does all the way through the lineages, the lineages, because there are many, Mm -hmm. and all the way through our system, because we are quantumly um quantum physics this is this is our this is who and what we are we're made up of all that so literally we chemically change people can heal um physical issues mental issues emotional da, 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 da. it is miraculous what can shift when this type of thing gets uh woken up and moved into a new place of, of love uh. I've had a little experience, sorry, of that, working with some energy people. And I'm a firm believer that generationals, our DNA is like, it's just past risk. There's been times where just personally in my life where I'm like, why am I self-sabotaging me? Mm -hmm. Why am I doing this to myself? I know better. Like I know better. And it's almost like, it's, it's not me. It's not who I am as being or a spiritual, emotional being. And I know that. And so I have worked with people, energies that we have, you know, taken generationals and our, you know, ancestors and just said, we love you. You know, these have been yours, but we're going to stop this now and give it to you. Allow, let you heal it. Yes. So we can be healed and move forward. Yes. Give it back to them. Thank you for passing on because they think we're the doorway and we're the doorway that gives it back to them. And we're, we're loaded down with all of it. And we give them back their little fraction and it thins out the depth and the heaviness. And then it's like you to them, you have the power and the responsibility to let it go, to mm-hmm. let it go to higher, to higher energies and frequencies. And if when everybody does that, there's like a, like a matrix of energy that we're all made up of. It changes and shifts and there's more light, there's more color, there's more vibrancy, there's more potential, there's more capacity to be in the current of wisdom that is right here, right now and ever changing every moment. Otherwise, we're stuck in those patterns and we just keep repeating it. And I've been in the place where I've seen myself repeat patterns and have been miserable and not capable of making a change. And it's, it's a terrible place to be. Yes. Listeners, we're going to go into break, but stay tuned. We'll be right back with Beverly and Jennifer after this message. All right, we're all clear. Okay, thanks, Erin. Beverly, you did great. Thanks for the questions. How interesting to like, be on the spot. Thanks. <laughs> Beautiful. I love what you do. Mm, thank you. I know I, that. Mm. Right, go ahead, Jennifer. Say what you're going to no, say. No, I just, I, I, I so much love and appreciate what you do. And um, I just am in such support of, the work because I feel like it free what you do frees people of the blame, shame, yes. guilt, yes. and the things that they carry because of the origins, you know, the origin of where some things may have started or tradition or conditioning. And so to unwind, unlock, like reshape those identities, I think really 
I can imagine give people permission to find out who they really are. Well, it's even beyond permission because you talk, you know, the power of thought, but it's also the chemistry. It's yeah. like they're more capable, they're more able. They've got right. the mechanism to do that. Right. right. And it's almost like they can't help themselves but say the truth, the new truth. Right. Yes. Yeah. And, and make some new people choices. get afraid of that, you know. It takes yeah. a lot of courage. Um yeah. not only personal courage, uh, well, just courage for a lot of reasons I think people run into. They don't want to insult their ancestors they don't want to insult you know they don't want to betray in any way and it also just takes a lot of courage to really step into who you are yes and the, isn't that curious that we think it's betraying but we're not we're helping them. right exactly but but i think that's what people think yeah exactly. well, that's our mindset yeah that's, that's, what, the, that's what we're taught yeah the guilt Sorry, you guys you're coming okay. back in about 10 seconds <laughs> okay thank you this is fun <laughs> <laughs> You are listening to Now or Never. The choice is yours. To connect with the program today, please call us at 1 888 346 9141. That's 1 888 346 9141. If you'd rather send an email, the address is Karen at shinenowornever.com. Let's get back to this week's show. Here again is Karen Wright. Listeners, thank you for being with us today and not going away and staying in this conversation with Beverly and Jennifer, both wonderful, wonderful guests. I just have a quick announcement. Mother's Day is right around the corner. And for the month of May, if you go to my website, shinenowornever.com, we are doing like an application or sponsors of women who have inspired you in one way or another. So go to my, go to my um, website, check it out, put in your pictures, put in your little story about the women in your life who have changed you. And we're going to have a drawing and give away some fun prizes and then highlight you throughout the month of May. I, I believe in empowering women you know that if you're part of my listening group and you're with me, you know how much I love women. And when we all work together and empowering each other and cherishing each other, what impact we have. And so I invite you to do that. Before we went into break, Beverly was talking to us about healing from generationals past and how as we are born, we carry in those imprints from generationals and things happen into our lives where I spoke like we self-sabotage and thinking, why am I doing this? This is something I don't do. And there's been a lot of scientific studies in the last, what, maybe six plus 10 years on more about this, Beverly. And I'm sure you have done some investigating yourself with this. And can you kind of describe a little bit how you can help someone release the generational patterns that have been passed on through them, through their DNA. And I know during break, Jennifer, we were talking about how it's kind of like a mindset too. How you, how can an individual allow themselves to break free, understanding that it's healing for our ancestors to say, hey, this is your stuff. We love you, but guess what? You get to take care of it because I got to take care of my stuff and I'm healing and I'm going a whole new de you know, direction. So what what's you your think? question? So my question is when you're working with somebody, uh -huh. how do you help them get into that mind frame that oh, time? Yeah. So again, the mind, the, for me, the mind is, is key. And it's an energetic zone that I take my people into. So it's, uh, you could call it a sacred space, but it's a timeless space. So I take people into a meditative space. And in that space, anything is possible. So in my reality and quantum physics reality, all, all time is now, past lives and so forth. They're all current. That's why we can tap in and get so much information. So we go into this timeless place where we can reach the different ancestors and early childhood times that are involved in these self-sabotaging behaviors that we're repeating and have conversations with them in real time 
as the adult, mm -hmm. to the 10 year old, to the three year old, to the in the womb developing child, to the ancestors hundreds of years ago, and find out from their point of view what they want us to know. Because the pattern is intelligent, it has information, it's about unlocking it, opening it up. So in that timeless zone, we ask, what is, what is the information that's stored there? And once we receive it, I'm getting chills. There's a whole shift that happens and that can happen. That's when the exchange of, let me give you back what is rightfully yours and let me collect what is rightfully mine. Let me disentangle us from having to repeat this way of living. And I'm kind of stuck here. And then, you know, it depends on the situation, but typically or often I invite this big network of awareness to free up the energy that, that's there, that they want us to live out. I'm not, am I clear at all? A little but, weird. Jennifer, does it make sense to you? Because this is not, this is something I have learned before. And so I would love Jennifer's input if that makes sense to you what she's saying. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I love it. I It's a freeing and a, yeah. and a release and um, a forgiveness and, you know, figuring out who we are. I mean, I think the work you're doing is so incredibly essential to the evolution of who we become in the world. Yeah. I like what you said about knowing, becoming, knowing more about who we are and this disentanglement from these, these uh, ways of being, like having to repeat the ways of being. It's like, oh, there's a little visceral feeling of, oh, this is me. And that's their idea of a good time. My idea of a good time is what I value, what is important to me, how I want to live in the world, which perhaps isn't totally supported by society or even my family, but fi finding that truth. And then the person can live more honestly For and themselves. even speak more honestly. Yeah. You know, those habits of holding things back or whatever doesn't have to be there. Yeah. And as we go into this, because this transition is really sweet into what Jennifer does. Um, I want to highlight Jennifer right now. Jennifer has been in her career to 30 plus years and she has founded, it's called Her Stories. When I first was introduced to Jennifer, I was I'm always blown away by everyone, but I saw her work. She sent over some of her work to me so I could, could watch. And she goes, you can't really explain it. You have to watch it. Um, so this is going to be your challenge, Jennifer, to explain to my listeners what you do, because it's absolutely beautiful. And um, after the next break, I'm going to make sure that we, you share your information, how people can get a hold of each of you to reach out personally to you, to, to do this, to do her story. Um, so Jennifer, take it away. Sorry, I just get so excited. <laughs> Thank you, I love it. I, I really appreciate when people see the work and love the work because it is my full heart and it is everything that I'm about and everything I wanna do. So I will try to explain as best as I can I tend to get involved with things that you have to experience in order to understand it. That's been my life journey on everything. And this is one of them. But basically, I help women tell their stories. And I do it in a really unique way. My background is photography and editing and storytelling, directing, dancing. Uh, I was a teaching artist for 16 years, still am. Actually, I still work with the New York City Inner School Public System. Um, everything the arts. I've done and been a part of everything. And so um, for 16 years, I was working with children to empower them to be the best that they can be through an artistic lens. When the pandemic hit and all the schools shut down, I shifted my passion to women. I'm still passionate about children, but now I wanted to create a platform to help women tell their stories and make an impact on the world with them. So I combine all of my skill sets, the editing, photography, the storytelling, the directing, the movement, the music, all of it. And so I basically invite women to tell their story in the way that feels most authentic to them. It starts with a conversation, which lends itself to be the, the, the audio of the video that I create. So that conversation, I edit down to about four minutes all of my videos, which by the way, it's called the Her Stories Collection. And there's about 85 in 17 months in this collection. 
And all videos are no longer than three to five minutes long. And that's on purpose because people do not have an attention span to listen for too long these days, right? So it's quick, but it's entertaining and beautiful and it's got a lot of elements. So one of the elements is the story that I extract from our conversation. Then I also have an embodiment practice, which brings in my movement and teaching practices for my entire life. And I call that the power of gesture. It's, it's a movement practice or embodiment practice that is accessible to everyone, whether you have any movement training or nothing at all. It is truly used just with the hands. The hands can tell your entire story. So the woman and I extract some of the elements from her story and she embodies that with a gesture, fear, shame, love, empowerment, whatever those gestures are. So mm -hmm. we kind of create this story, a nonverbal story that allows her to tell her story, you know, without words. I take that and I edit that in. So the layers are music. We find an instrumental piece of music. I layer on top the, her voice and her story. I layer on top that gesture sequence that we curated together in our conversation. And then there's one other element. I invite a woman to create additional video clips that represent her life. And I, I get those and I add those in too. So I feel like my editing style is very fluid, which represents a woman's energy. Mm -hmm. And so the, it's like a dance. It's like whether you've danced ever in your life or not at all. It gives off this very fluid and beautiful expression of her story through an artistic lens. Um, I, these, these stories start with the woman, but then quickly I realized that the people that watch the story is also transformed. So many experiences. I mean, I have 82 in the collection, but I have over a hundred stories because some women use them for private pur purposes, mm -hmm. like legacy pieces or leaving it to their children. I mean, I've literally had the most beautiful experiences where a woman who unfortunately she passed away, she was dying from breast cancer and she had three months left to live and she wanted to curate mm -hmm. her story. She left it for her family, you know, so things like that, as heart wrenching as that is so beautiful. And mm -hmm. it was shown at her funeral and like, oh my God. So there's a million, whether it's a brand story or used for legacy or used for personal. Um, I just think as an artist, there is no better inspiration than a woman's life journey. So as an artist, I'm beyond passionate to help tell the story in this way, but I also feel like there is so much possibility for impact because there's education around these stories, around diversity and inclusion and culture and experience and so much, you know, Beverly that you were talking about around, mm -hmm. you know, ancestry and heritage and our past and our present and, uh, you know, giving, um, voice to who we are and the impact that we're supposed to make on the world. So that kind of is that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did I, I love the it. Question? Yeah, no, you did amazing because I'm like going, I, if anyone could do it, you could do it because you are so artistic. You are an artist. Like when I went through some of the videos that you sent me um, of these beautiful women and their journeys and exactly what you said, like I talk with my hands, I do all that stuff, but seeing it. And as you said, it was layer after layer that you put these little, the three minute, five minute films together. Do you call them yeah. films? Like films? You know, um, I'm still trying videos. to figure out the language around it. So you films, can help me video. film, movie, video. documentary. Yeah, video story, I think visual storytelling, visual story, visual stories. I, I love that word. Um, yeah, visual and story. <laughs> so as you take a woman going through this, because empowering a woman to do this, if you're working with someone who has low self-esteem mm -hmm. and they're like going, OK, I kind of want to do this, but I'm a little nervous. How how what have you seen through your clients? with women who have low self-esteem because there's mm -hmm. a lot of us and we all go through yeah. times in our life when we each have low self-esteem. Yeah, such a great question. The first and most important thing is providing a safe space. So for me, it is not about the video. The video is fantastic, but it's not, uh, let me correct myself. It's not about sharing the video. It, it would be great, 
because I believe that as low self-esteem as you have, you have impact, you have possibility to make impact. So to, to tell your story and to show the world would be amazing. And if not, there's no shame in that whatsoever. So to allow the woman to know this is our container and this video doesn't go anywhere beyond us unless you want it to. So first is safety. And then the second thing is, um, it's not always about the video. I have a embodiment practice. So I work with women one-on-one -on -one for a series of five, 10, 20 sessions, and we never do the video. So some women want to understand the power of gesture and just mm -hmm. embody her story and her emotions on a day-to-day -day basis without creating the video. But most women, after a few sessions with me, start to gain that confidence and understand there's so much power in her body, in her voice, in her story that we tend to get there, you know? So it's a journey and it's understandable because it requires tremendous vulnerability, tremendous. And mm -hmm. I have such huge um, empathy for that, but also, and compassion, but I believe so much, you use the word acceptance, self-acceptance and acceptance for the world, really, radical acceptance is what I call it. It's like for yourself. Yeah. And in order to get there, we have to have a conversation and it just, it kind of flows gradually. So it can be and start and end with just our sessions or we can move to video. So again, I think the big theme is safety. The most Love important that. thing. Yeah. And I think that's really important. Even with Beverly's we're about mm -hmm. two minutes before we go into break, but I think even with Beverly, like with your work along with Jennifer's, even with mine, when I do Reiki master and, and working with my clients too, it's all about that safety mm -hmm. and what we feel. Even between the three of us here, this is why I love Zoom because I want to see your face. I want to see the body language. I want to see what you're feeling because then we can pivot, we can turn, we can see if we're engaging or not because this is a safe zone for us and for our listeners to be able to feel safe with the questions they have when they call in, things like that. So mm -hmm. I love that word. I love that word safety and that environment that is instilled mm. is very important. Yes. I think it's essential for mm -hmm. any work, you know, yeah. to feel safe, to feel seen, to feel validated. But that all comes to safety. You know, when you feel validated, you feel safe because you know mm -hmm. someone has seen you and they understand you, right? Yeah. So it all kind of filters into a safe space. Yeah, I agree. And that with that safety comes the acceptance, right? Yeah, exactly. Because then you allow yourself, if you're safe, then you allow yourself to be vulnerable. And then mm -hmm. you build confidence because your truth comes out and you're like, oh, and it's just like a cycle, <laughs> right? You're vulnerable, yeah. you're seen, you're heard, you're validated, and then you gain confidence. And it just, you know, just builds on, one thing builds on the other. Which I love. And we're getting ready to go into break, but with Beverly's work also, I want to say this, you, you're owning yourself, you're owning your own truth, letting go of the generational things. And once you've been able to own who you are and your truth, right? Then you can feel that safety. You can use your voice. You can use it. You can accept who you are and how powerful that is. Listeners, we're going to go into break. Stay tuned that we have more. When we come back, we're going to find out how you can get a hold of these beautiful ladies and work with them, see what they do. It's, it's art. It's just mag, it's magnificent. It's, it's delicious. It just makes me so happy. We will be right back after this message. All right, we're all clear. Hey, thanks. Good job. Jennifer, fascinating. I look forward to seeing the videos. How do I find that? Will you tell us? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, I have a YouTube channel. It's called the Her Stories Collection. Um, I can actually put it in here. You know, I've done, it's really amazing because I've done little to no marketing around YouTube even though I put all of the videos there. So I really need to learn how to do that. But a lot of them are also on my, that would be important. Um, then, but I do, I put um, a lot of them on my website, which is uh, herstories.org. So I'm putting in the chat, 
Is that okay that I did that? Yes, I put my YouTube perfect. channel. No, thank you for um, doing that. The YouTube channel and then the and then the website. And then also on my Instagram, I feature a lot of the women there, which is her stories underscore told T O L D. Yeah. And they're they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. And um thank you. It's on my list. I have not forgotten because I was good to do it and things happened with life and it's just like it's on there. It's something good. I want to do. Yes. I really hope you do it. And I want to, because it's art, because, you know, at the heart of it is the art. So mm -hmm. I really have big ideas around galleries in person. I, I mean, I do them guys. virtually. We're coming back in about 10 seconds. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Anyway, we'll talk about that another time. Okay. At Realty Path Summit, visit your best move yet.net. You are listening to Now or Never, The Choice is Yours. To connect with the program today, please call us at 1-888-346-9141. That's 1-888-346-9141. If you'd rather send an email, the address is karen at shinenowornever.com. Let's get back to this week's show. Here again is Karen Wright. Listeners, thank you for taking the time and being with us today for Now or Never, The Choice is Yours. We have been been entertained and um how else do i want to say not just entertained but full of wisdom and knowledge about self-healing from ancestral stages in our lives that we bring with us to owning to being aware to letting go to be able to take that safety space and make it into a movie about our lives so between Beverly and Jennifer, they're the full package deal right here, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> they're the Oreos. I love it. <laughs> and this next, the next segment of this um, show, you guys, is sponsored by my book, Now or Never, Shine, Baby, Shine. It's an international bestseller book. You can find it on Amazon. Um, Barnes & Noble's Target, Walmart, it's all over. And in March... It I it's now out in audible so you can actually listen to the story and that was very surreal for me to have someone else tell my story and a couple of my friends have listened to it and they're like you know when we read it we we could see you but when we heard it it was more it was impactful in a totally different way where we grew and learned even more so about journeys about loss and how it can apply to us as individuals. And so listening to that, I just feel like anything we do with, with the arts, with our journeys, with our hobbies, whatever they are, if we impact one person, we feel like we've, we've fulfilled what we needed to do. And it's usually more than one, people, one person that we impact throughout this entire life with whatever we do. And both my guests today, Jennifer and Beverly, they both are impacts in what they do and, and how they help other people. At this time, I would love each of you to share how our listeners can get a hold of you um, by sharing your website, um, you know, an email address, Facebook, Instagram, whatever's best way for them to get a hold of you. That's great. If you want to share your phone number, you can. I usually don't suggest that, but it's up to you. So Jennifer, we'll start with you. How can people get a hold of you uh, and set up a time to meet with you? Yeah, thank you. So I, my website is www.herstories.org and that story is S-T-O-R-I-E-S.org. Um, I'm also on Instagram, which is herstories underscore told, T-O-L-D. Um, you can reach me on my uh, Facebook. Also, I have her stories and LinkedIn. I'm on her stories, but to contact me directly, it would be Jen at herstories.org. And you can reach out to me there on my website. I have a whole contact section. So I'd love, love, love to hear from you and um, talk about how we can bring your story to life in this way. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. Beverly, how can people get a hold of you? Um, my website is beverlybrunel.com. 
there are lots of uh, resources on there, meditations and interviews and so forth that are very rich. And uh, there are th three journeys on there that are like having a private session with me. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's a great resource for people. And then let's see, uh, email Lawson at beverlybrunel.com. And I've got a, a YouTube channel in the works. So not quite yet, but um, it's in the works. Well, you and Jennifer can get together and talk about the YouTube stuff. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, that Absolutely. Will be, yes, that'll be good. YouTube is wonderful. There's so many tools at our fingertips and it's just knowing the ins and the outs with everything. As we continue on before the show is over, because there's so much to talk about. Um, Beverly, you said something that stirred my, my thoughts here a little bit about... Um, the meditation with the three stages of meditation or meditating. Can you share with the listeners the importance of meditation in what you do and how they can use it in their daily life, like a routine for people? One of my, my favorite routines is mm -hmm. uh, what I call the heart light meditation. And it came to me years ago and I find it's a great uh, door opener for, to go into that sacred place, that safe space, that timeless space where all things are possible and where insights come up through, through the body, through the field of information around us. It, uh, it's very calming, very centering, very uh, re, um, full of possibility in a calm way. And uh, it's on my website. So go to beverlybrunell.com, scroll down, and you'll see three free meditations if you sign in. And uh, there are three options on there. One is like five or seven minutes long. And the mm -hmm. other one is a longer journey. But my point is you go into the heart space from the mind into the heart space, invite the heart light to grow with every breath that you take. So as you breathe, that heart light becomes softer and fuller and richer. And as it expands, it expands up through the throat, up through the head, mm -hmm. through all the components there, down through the arms, the shoulders, the arms into the fingertips. I do it really slow on the recording. Yeah. And then down to the torso, marinating all the organs, all the bodily functions and systems, all the bones and so forth, down through the pelvis, down the legs, through the knees, the ankles, into the toes. So you're full of this heart light and you can do it anywhere, anytime, even while you're driving, you just don't close your eyes. Right. And it's, it's very, um, it's a great tool. And then you can take it into a longer version by expanding that hot light all around you, relaxing into it. So you're in this orb of light and then ask questions, invite people not into your orb, but outside of your orb and ask questions, have a conversation. You can bring in your inner child and I have, it's a wonderful exercise to have the inner child children come up and say, look at, look at me, sweethearts, see this heart light. I want you to do the same. And they're like, yes, 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 yes. Cause it feels so good. Mm -hmm. So they do the breathing and they do the heart light expansion and you invite them into your heart. So you're, you're gathering yourself. It's like a soul retrieval. It's so rich. It sounds beautiful. It sounds, and the, you know what I love? Cause I meditate every day type thing. And I just love the chakras and I invite the light in each chakra every morning to guide and protect. You know, I put my beautiful bubble around me, the whole thing with the heart. I love how you're bringing into the heart light. Um, and you're, you're letting that heart light appreciate every organ in your body, everything about your body, actually loving your body. It's a marinade. It's yes. a heart light marinade. And it's, it's just its essence. It, it's what it does. Yeah. And we take for granted, listeners, and maybe you don't, but until something happens, like you get a stuffy nose or you stub your toe, do you go, oh my gosh, you, we take our bodies for granted. They operate all by themselves. We don't have to think about it. They just do it. And what a gift and a blessing that we have. You know, I believe in, in God, the higher power, the supreme, that that energy, the female, you know, male energy that's within us. And what a what a tribute every single day we get to wake up and say, thank you. I made it through the night 
<laughs> but actually doing it with that heart love. I appreciate you sharing that so much, Beverly. That just kind of, yeah, Jennifer's doing the same thing, like heart to heart. It's yeah. like, we appreciate that so much. And I'm sure, Jennifer, as you work with your with your ladies also, you know, I'm sure you do some sort of grounding, some sort of meditation with them also. Could you share with our listeners just for a minute what you do? Yeah, That's right. sure, of course. The the power of gesture, the the process that I take women through when they create gestures that represent parts of themselves or the emotions of their story, their daily story, their full story. Um, it could be a sequence of maybe five to eight gestures and it becomes really like her moving mantra, you know, and so closing her eyes, allowing the music, I'm a big music person. Mm -hmm. And so allowing that music to kind of fill your soul and then connect to each gesture and stay in each gesture for a long time so mm -hmm. that you can honor that part of who you are. So if that's fear, anxiety, fearlessness, empowerment, isolation, whatever those words are, to spend time with that gesture so you can really honor, honor, learn, celebrate that emotion that part of you so that is like a moving meditation that i that i um take a woman through every time i work with them i love that because you're helping them become aware of emotions which is another huge topic for me in this day and age people don't want to have emotions we're taught we were taught i was taught not to have emotions right dry up your tears. You're fine. Don't, don't be a weenie about that. You're totally fine. You know, don't be whatever. And you're kind of like, what? Um, but how important emotions are and that feeling, how important it is to feel. And it goes hand in hand with each of your work, what Beverly is doing. You're feeling the past generations under letting them know or things that have happened in the womb as a baby, where you were just conceived the energies that were taken in on that during that time, if it was a positive or a negative, if it was scary or if it was delightful, all of that, those energies are feeling as the baby is formed. And there's so much scientific study behind all of this. Um, as we are about to close, you guys, I invite each of you to share with my listeners a word of advice something that they can take away and go, Jennifer said this, Beverly said this, and it, in, it will impact them. So who wants to go first? I'm happy to go. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think I want all of the listeners to know that their story matters. It really matters. There's someone waiting to hear it. I love that. And someone they will impact. Yeah. Mm. Thank you for saying that. Their stories do matter. And never be ashamed of your story, no matter where you've been, because you're going to help other people through expressing and telling your story and honoring your story. So thank you, Jennifer, for saying that. Beverly, what about you? I would say that every moment is a point of power and a point of absolute possibility. And even though things have been the same in the past, doesn't mean the next moment that the future will be the same as the past has been. And to bring ourselves into this moment, you could call it into the heart space and invite in, breathe in new possibilities with what your intention is, like the card today. You know, turn to love. It's invite in the power of love and presence to open up what is different and new and more what enriching, loving, kind mm -hmm. and creative in our lives. I so, appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. No, finish what you're going to say. Well, it's not like updating our values, like waking up to, wait a minute, I don't really want this. I really want that. Right. Okay. What are we going to do about it? Oh, well, let me invite in new possibilities for how I can move in that direction. Invite in new possibilities. So own your story and invite in new possibilities. Listeners, I appreciate you all for being here with us today now. Remember our affirmation for today, I turn towards love. The breath is a gift of life. Choose now and live. Remember this world is not for sissies. 
We are each here to experience our own story as we each walk our personal journeys. Have an amazing day and thank you for being here and choosing to be here now. Until next week, sending you all love and light. All right, we're all clear. Great show today, guys. Okay, thanks, Aaron. Thanks so much. Talk to you guys next week. Take care. Okay, thanks. All right, girls. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. How'd you feel? Great. It was really fun. I would love to talk more. I know. You know, it's like the hour goes. Yeah. (laughs) It's like the hour goes by so fast. Yeah. Um, It does. It really does. And there's so much to share. And I just appreciate you guys taking the time and being with us. And you're both amazing. Mm -hmm. And so are you. Thanks. You're outrageous. I just want to throw in that heart light idea is it's a great thing to teach kids. I was going to say any age, just teach them. It's such a beautiful thing because you never know what their future is going to bring. And it's a way to navigate and to come back home to self, you know, I love that. I would love them to implement meditation from nursery all the way into graduation college. I think it's uh, something grandson. They they meditate in his school in Georgia. I love that. I love that. Good job, Georgia. We love that. (laughs) (laughs) It's so good. Well, if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to reach out to me. You know how to get a hold of me. Thanks again. Share the link and you can go on the Facebook live page, which is now or never the choice is yours on Facebook. Okay. Um, And you can share that out with your um, communities, your tribe of women. Um, And I just thank you from my heart to yours. For both Thank of you, you as well. Thank wonderful, you. Wonderful to be with you. Okay. Love you guys. Thank you. Have a good okay. day. Okay. You too. Bye. Bye.